Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me is Shay Dixon. And Shay, um, I'm not Billy, but Billy's coming back from Maine, and uh, in that time, North uh, LSU picked up a commitment from DeCorian Moore, wide receiver from Duncanville, Texas. Um, big deal two days after getting uh, Caden Durham running back in the 2024 class. More obviously in the 2025 class uh, at the moment, top 10 in the class um, across all positions in the on three industry rankings. Uh, just what are your thoughts and uh, where are you at with this? Well, first off, uh, RIP Billy considered he is our Dallas resident and has been to Duncanville no less than 20 times yes. over these kids uh, past couple of years and all three of the biggest Duncanville targets they've been after commit while he's on a seven day vacation. So yeah. Tough look uh, for Billy. We've yeah. got it covered, though. Um, boy, this one, Matty B, I know you watched his film right before. Charles Power, who runs our on three rankings and scouting, said, and he's seen Duncanville play. He's watched all the games, and then he saw him in a bunch of seven-on-seven seven stuff this summer, and he said there's no doubt that DeCorian Moore is one of the best receivers in the country and will battle for that number one overall spot. Right now, the number two wide receiver in all of the 2025 class. So on the ranking alone, uh, you know you're getting a, a legit player, but just kind of take a look at some of these accolades in terms of stats and then track production, which I think plays a big role here. 5'11", 175, 44 catches, 767 yards, and seven touchdowns. Did it as a sophomore for a state title team, like I said, at Duncanville, who they can make the case as being one of the most talent-rich programs in America right now, coming out of okay. South Dallas. Yeah, He's got yeah, a 20 20- of the What's teams that, that aren't like uh, IMG Academy, you know, the Academy is like, that's one thing. But as far as regular public schools, I mean, yeah, that's one of them. Duncanville's elite. They likely aren't going to lose a game this year. We'll see. But uh, those stats for a sophomore are big time, obviously. Uh, Caden Durham being the running back on that team, an LSU commit. Now DeCorian Moore, the best receiver on the team, is now an LSU commit. But like I said, track stuff, long jump. 24 feet, seven inches, which is really, really good. Um, he was on that four by one team uh, that ran with his teammate, Caden Durham. They ran a 40.26 at the UIL Class 6A state finals, but it wasn't good enough to win. Uh, Jelani Watkins, another LSU commit, a receiver, uh, and Klein Forrest took home that title. But again, more of the speed. He's got some PRs this spring 10 6 3 in the 100 meter, 21.38 in the 200 meter. Those times are flying, especially for a sophomore. This is about as big of a pickup as it gets. And obviously, when you're a five-star and a top-10 overall player, regardless of position and the number two receiver, by definition, it's a pickup as big as it gets. But even the film, the production, the verified track stuff, it all backs up for a kid who has two years of high school left. Matty B, you turn on that film and you're like, this kid could play anywhere. Yeah, that was... (laughs) You turn it on and you see sophomore and you see um, the track times, obviously, Uh, the production at the level of Duncanville getting 44 receptions for almost 800 yards and seven touchdowns. I mean, that production is incredibly promising for a sophomore. But then you turn on the film and you're like, he's a lot more polished than what you would expect from different sophomores across the country. I know um this isn't the same case but a guy like we saw an eighth grader ethan feaster uh during the camp season right out of desoto who we're like wow that guy is going to be really really good in 2026 27 um i watched a corian morris tape and it's like the way he gets in and out of his routes is incredibly advanced he's not just winning on deep balls and on you know vertical routes even if he was doing that at that level of 6a ball in texas it would be impressive but he is doing a lot of the little things on the intermediate routes that give me a lot of promise. And that's what you expect from five-star receivers, um, no matter if they're sophomores, juniors, or seniors. So I expect his production this year um, on obviously a very good Duncanville team to be, you know, maybe go from 44 catches to 60 catches. I don't think he's going to be in that. Like he's not going to be in that 70, 80 range. I don't think because there's so much talent on this team and they'll probably be blowing teams out by 40, but Still, we, we'll see a jump in production. We'll see a, a jump in overall um, his numbers. And But on tape, I was really, really impressed by what, what he showed. Oh, you're muted. I had muted myself on the uh, 
Duncanville High broadcast too for on three. Uh, I was just talking there with nobody hearing me. Um, that was in front of a much bigger audience. So I'm glad that I could follow that up today with muting myself and another Duncanville kid and talking away about it. Uh, Charles Power, our on three national director of scouting and rankings, like I said, was very high on him. He echoed exactly what you just said about just even watching the film for the first time. Maddie B said, and I'll quote, this is in one of the stories on the Bengal Tiger right now. He said the gravity more draws from secondaries with his ability to get downfield and separate. It really stands out. He's a natural separator with long speed and a change of direction, which I think is the most important thing he brings both to the table. He's not a pure track guy who can't change directions. He understands how to change speeds, gear up, gear down, tempo his routes, and he stacks corners off the line consistently. And he went on to talk a good bit about just how this is, even if it's jump ball situations at 5'11", 175, he can win them. Uh, he truly feels that LSU is walking away with one of the handful of the best receivers in America and someone who has a very real shot to finish at number one. I'll, um, I'll add real quick on, on when you watch his tape, it's really evident to me that this guy is just kind of a, a baller in a sense. If you watch it, that he has, so he's the punter on Duncanville, right? Um, there's several plays where he just gets the ball and he doesn't have time to get the punt off and runs. There was a fourth and 17 where he took off on his right and goes and has to hurt, jump over a man to get the first down, jumps over, does a flip and gets the first down. And I'm like, okay, this dude is just, just – he just – he'll, like, put him anywhere on the field, he'll make plays. He, he had blocking clips where he's blocking for Caden Durham down the field. Like, that. those plays really showed to me, all right, this guy loves football and he's willing to, like, you know, do whatever it takes to win. Yeah, all the high school coaches out there listening uh, or former high school coaches or college any level, really, but high school certainly, uh, who probably didn't have a decorian more back there no. at Punter, but you had someone that was kind of an athlete – those fourth and 17s where they take off and you're just like, no, 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 no. And then that, and then you're like, pull them yeah. off. And it's the old, uh, don't ever do it again, but good, you know, good job. Yeah, you got the job. first way to go. Yeah. So how did, um, if you want to get into how they pulled this off, you know, what, what it took for LSU to get this obviously early commitment, you know, still a ways away from the 25 signing day, but what did it take to pull it off? And uh, just what, um, how big of a deal is it? Yeah, I think you circled the Bayou Splash here, and that's when he came into town with his another kid who's a rising junior at Duncanville, Javion Holiday, is a corner, uh, and he's got an LSU offer. But the two seniors, the rising seniors, Caden Durham and Colin Simmons, obviously this was a couple of weeks back, so at the time both of them were uncommitted, and LSU blew the group away. And you can see now why there was high confidence coming out of the Bayou Splash that LSU was in a good position for Colin Simmons and Caden Durham, and the buzz around DeCorian Moore proved to be real. And for LSU to get to this week when they knew that they had an August 10th commitment date set for Durham and Simmons, and then quietly there were many people around LSU kind of saying, keep an eye on the 12th. DeCorian Moore, 48 hours later, is going to make an announcement, and that ends up coming to fruition, and he commits to LSU, and Durham commits to LSU as expected. And then Simmons said, hey, I came down to the end, and in the final 24 hours I made my decision, and he ends up sticking with Texas it was the work done that weekend, the relationships that he's built with guys on the staff. And again, you go to Cortez Hankton as the position coach, you go to Brian Kelly as the head coach, and then so many other people, whether it's on-field coaches or guys on the personnel side. We've seen Sherman Wilson play a huge role with a number of these kids, especially this group of Duncanville targets. So it really does take a team effort because you've got to not only convince a kid, but his family that this is the right move. And DeCorian's even talked about that plenty before. He is a kid who grew up around the UT program, a lot of family in Austin. Everyone thought he would end up committing to Texas. As you noted, we're a while away from signing day, but for him to go ahead and get on board, I think is massive. And for them to be able to have this commitment kind of in their back pocket the last couple of weeks, get through splitting the other two 50 50, you know, there with Simmons and Durham and still come away with a commitment from more a couple of days later tells me that this LSU staff is kind of really figuring things out on the recruiting trail in terms of what they want to do, which big prospects they're in on, who they think they can get. And ultimately Simmons didn't go their way, but Durham did. And, and now with more on board, uh, I think that I said early on, if they can get into Duncanville and get one kid, that would be really impressive. Now they've gotten two and both of them are very elite players and they're the best running back and receiver on maybe the best high school team in America. That's a nice thing to hang your hat on if you're LSU. Yeah. 
Um, you kind of covered it, but I did want to ask, you know, what it means for LSU to start getting into Duncanville, to take those steps forward to every single year, Duncanville is going to have maybe not Colin Simmons as far as a top five player in the country, but they'll have a top 20, 25 player in the country usually every single year. And Texas looks like they're going to be in on every Duncanville player from here on out. Usually Oklahoma obviously makes a push with being Dallas to Oklahoma right there. Um, a and I, I don't I haven't heard much A&M Duncanville stuff, I guess. I, maybe I've missed it. But, yeah, you know, those are the competitions now with SEC teams LSU is going to be in. Um, do you, you know, obviously getting two out of three. Is that just a really big deal for getting your foot in the door? A uh, massive. Like I said, I mean, not only is it in East Texas and you're into the Dallas area, LSU's always had a great presence in Houston, but they've recruited Dallas a lot more these past couple of cycles. But to get in at Duncanville is a big deal for the reasons you just mentioned. A lot of other programs have a lot of ties to that uh, high school in terms of getting kids year over year. LSU's not come away with any Duncanville kids. Caden Durham will sign with LSU. I have very little doubt about that. He'll be a senior right now. He's the only running back they were after. He's committed, so you're good there. Now that you've got more on board, yes, you've got to hold on until he graduates, which is a year and a half, two years away. But now that he's on board, you can really start to build some momentum beyond even Duncanville. And I know immediately a lot of people are saying, but what does it mean for Colin Simmons? Well, let's be realistic here for a minute. 48 hours ago, Colin Simmons committed to Texas. So let's let the dust settle there before we wonder if they could flip him, because clearly they felt good about him if they felt good about getting the other two kids and kind of sweeping the Duncanville trio of guys who were um, set to announce here before uh, the season came up. So we'll see on Colin Simmons if you can get him back to campus or if maybe an official yeah. visit could be in the works down the line. It certainly doesn't hurt now because uh, we know that, again, Colin Simmons was high on LSU. He announced with Caden Durham that day, but he was also there today uh, whenever another one of his teammates was announcing uh, in DeCorian Moore, and he knew good and well DeCorian was going to go to LSU. Uh, and he was there to celebrate with him. So Colin Simmons will sign with Texas until I see reason that he doesn't. But I don't think this hurts that they start, you know, get another teammate on board, a five star. Everybody's treated, you know, as an individual. Then none of them are a package deal. You want to hold on to Decorian more, more than you care about whether you're going to flip Colin Simmons at this stage. But I guess it's not done until it's done. And now that they Gone from zero Duncanville commits to two in the span of 48 hours. I think that at least it helps keep that LSU buzz around him uh, in terms of kind of not just a push from the coaching staff, but also, also his own teammates. Yeah. Real quick, before we get to the ad read, um, you think about it. I mean, Javian and Toviano, Arlington Martin, Ryan Yates, Denton Geyer, um, obviously uh, DeSoto. Um, you know, I, I mentioned Ethan Feaster earlier on. Um, the cornerback that transferred out. Tobiano, you got Tobiano. Yeah, I got Tobiano. Uh, the the cornerback that transferred out just last year that we were high on, out of uh, Waxahashi kid, yeah, Davis Robinson. Waxahashi, yeah, uh, Jalen Davis Robinson. I mean, that's all. That's all DFW areas, and that's different. You know, uh, different cities, different subdivisions in Dallas too. It's not like it's all just South Dallas and so on and so forth. So um, I know South Oak Cliff has, has a lot of talent these recent years as well. They've gone different places, Texas, so on and so forth. So yeah, Dallas area is going to be really, really interesting to see how um, LSU attacks that in the coming years. I, uh, I'm excited. This is uh, the kind of recruiting news that everybody likes to hear if you're an LSU fan. So it makes it fun for us to cover. Uh, yes, we do have uh, all of on three. A lot of on threes. Uh, got a new ad sponsor here uh, on the Bengal Tiger. Uh, and you know him well, Game Time. Uh, one of the best ticket apps out there. Actually, the best, certainly. Uh, from my experience, I've used them multiple times long before we uh, kind of hooked up with them and uh, started this ad deal. But if you don't know, it is a ticket app that really takes things to the next level. And it, whether that's sports, whether that's music, uh, concerts, whatever you're trying to see, uh, theater, comedy shows, uh, they've got it all. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. One thing I like, Matty B, is the Game Time guarantee. You can find tickets in the same section and row somewhere else for less. They will credit you 110% of the difference if you buy through Game Time. Again, we've hooked up with them. We've got the promo code for you. Here's what to do download the Game Time app, create an account. And then use the code TIGERS, and that'll get you 20 bucks off your first purchase. So, again, the Game Time app, it's in all the app stores. One word, G-A-M-E-T-I-M-E. 
create your account. You might already have one, but use Tigers for 20 bucks off your first purchase. I'm in Maddie B. I've got a couple of concerts on my New Orleans list that are coming up uh, before the season starts. I'm hoping to make at least one of them. Uh, we'll see how our practice schedule works out or if any more kids want to commit <laughs> on a Saturday, whenever uh, you would think that we wouldn't have much recruiting news. But when I do, I'm on Game Time app. Y'all uh, help us out. Give them a download. Use Tigers promo code T-I-G-E-R-S, and you get that 20 bucks off your purchase. Yeah, I need to see. Uh, last year, I was going to go to a Pelicans game when they were good, and then Zion got hurt and they weren't good anymore, and so I didn't go. So this year, if they start off strong again, I'm definitely going to go at some point. That's, well, that's game time will be your app. And when they're no good, then the tickets are cheaper. And then you can yeah, get exactly. That, I thought about that for a while. Even less. You gotta work <laughs> about that that. Um, well, let's uh I guess we can close out with this. They do have four commits now. It's not many, uh, but it's about average for the 2025 cycle. These kids are all rising juniors in high school to give you some perspective of where they're at, kind of with numbers. Things start to pick up really after kids' junior seasons. So again, to get a five-star like DeCorey and Moore on board now is a very big deal. They also have another borderline committed uh, as an offensive lineman. He's the second highest rated commit. They've got another tight end already in J.D. LaFleur, who's an LSU legacy. Uh, obviously, most folks know his father, who was a first-round pick out of LSU uh, at tight end. And then you've got Jalen Bell out of Georgia as a corner. Four commitments, the number four class in the country right now behind Bama, Georgia, and Oregon. But to be right up there in that top two with Bama and Georgia, who also have four and five commits each, is a good thing. It is very early, but you want to be keeping pace with them, right? If you are trying to make it into the playoffs, the expanded playoffs, compete for the West every year, you've got to be recruiting on the, or at least close to the levels that those two programs do. And this is how you do it. And Ryan Williams, the number one receiver in the country, Matty B is the five star. He's committed to Bama. Jamie French, the number three receiver in the country, is a five-star. He's committed to Bama. Now the number two receiver, the guy sandwiched in between them, a five-star committed to LSU. Those are the type of game changers that get you big-time position playmakers, whether it's at left tackle, quarterback, you know, running back, edge, wide receiver. I mean, these are absolute difference makers for a program. Yeah. I, if we continue to look just kind of big picture at 2025, obviously everybody's like Bryce Underwood, right? Everything Bryce Underwood. And uh, that's, that will be the overarching top topic when people talk about this 2025 class, no matter what. I'm looking at, they get, they get more. Harlem Berry is obviously the one that I love. You know, I've loved Harlem Berry. I mean, everybody loves Harlem Berry. You love every, it's not hard to love Harlem Berry. But then you go down the list, and if if in a theoretical world where LSU fans are like, all right, 2025 class, you build the ideal one, Underwood, Moore, Barry, as an offensive trio in that class, has to rival one of the best, you know, offensive trios of any class in LSU history because that's potentially probably three top 20 players in the country. Like that, that's where LSU fans, uh, their minds will go and. I don't really blame them because then you get some no. James Simon and other players as well. That's also very exciting. Yeah. I mean, you think of three skill players on offense and all three being five stars, number potentially number one players at their position. Bryce Underwood seems like a no brainer to finish number no. one. He's one of the better quarterback prospects to come through in the past couple of cycles, at least. And that's not my opinion. That's the opinion of people who are evaluators at on three and watch a lot of tape and said, this kid is, Coming out of Michigan is a real deal, and it's LSU or Michigan. Um, we've heard the buzz that he might move his decision up much earlier than the January date. Um, we'll see if that happens. Ball's obviously in Underwood's court, but Underwood and DeCorey and Moore know each other. And Matty B, when you're looking at a school like LSU, and we've heard Underwood say it before, they've got a long track record of having surrounding their quarterback with elite receivers, guys who went on to the NFL like, Odell and Jarvis and now Justin Jefferson and Chase and, you know, you can name everybody else. Those when a quarterback like Underwood sees a decor and more get on board, don't think that that doesn't catch his attention. Like because LSU, if they continue, as you said, Harlem Barry, someone they feel great about. He's here in Louisiana. He's the number one running back in the country. So Underwood got to work with him at camp. They spent a lot of time in Tiger Stadium with Simon as well, a top 10 running back. 
you get the sense that Underwood can start to get a feel for what LSU, you know, what he'd be surrounded by if he came to LSU. And as you noted, I thought you did a good job of laying it out there. Does it get any better than pitching to the quarterback? Hey, you'll have the number one running back in the country sign and another top 10 running back. Oh, and you've already got the number two receiver in the country committed and we'll continue to build on that. And if for, by whatever, you know, LSU fans' prayers being answered under what does go to LSU, Matty B, well, then how many other receivers say, oh, I'm in, you know, how many other players say, oh, I want to be a part of that. And that goes from offense to defense. That's the kind of kid who could change a class completely. I think that's what you see them build on here is, okay, we've got a big five-star receiver and how do we parlay that into getting Harlan Berry to commit early as the number one running back, getting Underwood to pick LSU over Michigan and get on board as the number one quarterback on the country, uh, in the country. And if you do those things, the sky's the limit with the class. You are actually competing for the number one class in America and not just saying, hey, if we get a top five class, that's definitely good enough, which it is. But if you get the number one class with a lot of those guys, it's a program changer. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I like to bring that up because I wanted uh, LSU fans to quickly just start thinking of the 2025 class and what that could potentially be. Also, J.D. LaFleur, I think, is going to be a four-star tight end when this is all said and done. He was really impressive to me at camp. And we haven't even got to any of the defensive players in Louisiana. They have a few really, really good ones. And Yeah, and that's the big thing as we wrap up here is that Louisiana already has double-digit recruits ranked in the on three top 300. Yeah. So that's just going to keep going up. And if you're locking down Louisiana, you're about to just default yourself into a top five class. When you start adding guys like DeCorey and Moore, if you're really going to get a Bryce Underwood, you are 100% competing for the number one class in the country, which is exactly what LSU fans want. I mean, Brian Kelly came here for this type of setup. You've got the recruiting you know, territories. You've got Louisiana. You've got East Texas. If you can win on the field – guys like this will continue to get on board and they see the results of what he did in year one by winning the West. Yep. All right. That's all we got for y'all today. Hope y'all enjoyed uh, the episode. Uh, big recruiting news, obviously throughout the week. Good job. Shay uh, for staying on top of it. Obviously Billy did what he could on Maine, but he'll be back and ready to go for the season. Uh, we continue to update y'all on fall camp. Uh, we'll have a podcast up on that very soon as well so check that out but uh yeah if you're watching on the youtube subscribe leave a like comment and share if you're listening on the audio side leave us a five-star rating and review we appreciate the support we will talk to y'all later